Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and I finally have both of my iPhone 10s. I wanted to have them in both the different colors that they come in. So my black one I got this morning at the Apple store, and this one came from T-Mobile. Pre-orders were a disaster. But I got both, that way I can compare the screens when I do the review. Nothing better than having two samples to take a look at. And of course, I went and I opened this one already, and here it is. So we really just have the silver one to unbox. But before that, I wanted to show you what I'm using for my case option, just really quick to give a shout out to Rhino Shield. I have to thank them so much as they've made this purchase possible. So this is the mod case. This case basically is both a bumper and a protective case at the same time. So we have this back piece right here that comes off. And right now I have the add-on, which is the lens adapter. So not only is this a protective case with interchangeable back plates, but I can also install lenses, which is super, super awesome. So I can expand the capabilities of my camera. So these are super light cases and have over 11 feet of drop protection, all while being incredibly functional. So take a look at that. Let's just go ahead and unscrew all this. So this pops off easily. Just stretch it out, grab it, pop it off. Here's your phone, nice and protected. And then if I want to convert it back into a bumper, I just add the rim in, which it comes with in the box. So there you are, very unassuming. You can also pop these buttons out and they give you the option to customize the colors. Everything's easy to put back in place. Then you just have to grab your phone, slide it in, and you are good to go. Now it's a bumper. So that is an extremely functional case with a great deal of drop protection. And if you don't like bumpers, well, the argument now is that you can simply get different back covers. So I like these a lot. This is very, very neat. These are on pre-order right now. If you want to take a look, check out the link in the description. And thank you again, Rhino Shield, so much. Let's go ahead and open this. So not only do I want to unbox this, I'm also going to give a little bit of a first impressions of what I think about these phones. And right off the bat, I think that these are either phones that people are going to really love or hate because of the way that these screens are. So just remove the plastic. Let's go ahead and lift up the box lid. You've got documentation, nothing special. What's really nice is that both of these phones both models that it comes in come with a black face. This really would not look good if it had a white face on it, which I saw some of the prototype models have that white face. So I'm glad that the final product is black on the front only. So we've got this little bit here. Listen to that. Yeah, that is so satisfying. I don't know what it is. There's nothing like pulling off the screen shield from Apple phones. So this is the silver model. And interestingly, I looked at the silver model of the iPhone 8 at the Apple store and it looked like it was just a tiny different tint for some reason, maybe it was just my eyes. But here we have it. Here you've got the silver model and the black one. Now these are both stainless steel along the sides. This one is a silver color and this one is black. Now, right now I can tell you that I just looked at all the phones in the Apple store and they're all scratched to heck. This polished stainless steel can just scratch so easily. Granted, I know you can buff it out, but I saw that the scratches looked more apparent on this shiny silver one. This is darker, so they're hidden a little bit better. But this is a device that you're gonna want a case on or a skin on to cover this up if you don't want it to get all marked. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Both of these are glass on the back and look very, very similar to the iPhone 8s. Both of these have two 12 megapixel cameras on the back, both with optical image stabilization this time. So I wanna test that out. The iPhone 10s have a 5.8 inch display in this very small footprint. So here we have the iPhone 8 Plus and you can just see the difference in the size there. It's pretty crazy. This display is taller and also slimmer, so I feel like you're not seeing as much on this one as you do here. It's definitely something to get used to, and that notch, well, I haven't really decided what I think about it just yet. So if you're curious to see the size of other phones, here we have the Pixel 2, and you can see that eh, the Pixel 2 is just a little bit taller. Width-wise, the iPhone 10 is just a little bit wider, but you've got a huge screen for this little body. 
So for the polarizing part that's going to make you either really love or hate this display, if you're looking at this real closely, you can see that there's quite a bit of bezel here where the screen stops short from. And I handed this to my husband and I told him, hey, you can keep this one if you'd like to. Just sell the iPhone 7 Plus and we'll just put what you make towards this. And he looked at it and said, uh-uh, that's horribly ugly. He just did not like it, didn't like the notch. Didn't like how the screen didn't come all the way to the edge, just looks really skinny to him. So some people are really not going to like just how much body is left on the sides here. For me, I don't really care. I've seen so many screens. It seems functional enough to me. Now, as far as this notch, this is what's really characterizing what this iPhone is. I bet you this is going to go on for several generations. This is what Apple wants anyway. Now, as long as you're keeping it in portrait mode, it really doesn't bother me so much. It gives it some character, but when you turn it to the side and you're viewing videos, it can get, well, obviously distracting. I'm kind of just wanting to put my thumb over it, pretend it doesn't exist. But then I forget that this has stereo speakers. So yeah, don't cover that. These speakers sound great, by the way. They get really nice and loud. I think what really bugs me about how this new screen functions is that here we have an episode of Stranger Things on Netflix, and to avoid that notch, you can see that we have letterboxing and pillar boxing. So you've got a bunch of black that's surrounding the entire frame, and you're losing a lot of screen real estate. So you've got a 5.8 inch display, but how much of it are you actually getting to use? Eh. You can, of course, double tap, and then you've got that notch there. So I end up just dealing with the notch because I do want to take advantage of that 5.8 inch display. If you don't like it, don't get this phone. That's all I can say. So then looking at gestures, I am getting used to it, although it's a little bit strange, especially because if you pull down from one side of the display, it does something different. So here you have all your toggles. If you go from the other side of the display, then you get your notification shade. And I'm actually liking how you toggle between different applications. That hasn't been an issue for me. I've gotten quite good at it, simply pulling up from the bottom and then pulling to the side. Although admittedly, I'm not very comfortable doing this with one hand. That's probably because I've got tiny hands, but you guys should let me know if you have one of these, how you feel about it. Now, again, if you have it in portrait mode, both sides of the notch do different things. So there you have all your toggles. And then again is the notification shade. I am happy that after the update that I just applied today, that we do have access to the reachability mode. It's very, very awkward. Basically, you just pull down from the bottom of the screen and there you go. If you want to take a screenshot, you need to hold down the power button and the up volume button. And that's how that works. And if you want to turn off the phone, you have to hold the Siri button and the down button, which essentially makes a power button. So we haven't lost any functionality here. They're just making things a lot harder, I think, than they need to be. Not all that intuitive, I think. Now, some people were saying that this display doesn't get very bright, and my response to that is, what are you talking about? So you just need to go underneath general settings, go underneath accessibility, display accommodations, and then you can see, ah, there's auto brightness. Why did they put that there? What? This, what? That is all I could say. So after I turn the auto brightness off and I turn the brightness all the way up, I can get well over 600 nits of brightness. So this display gets plenty bright, people. Plenty bright. But if you have auto brightness tacked on, it's going to knock it down. I was getting about 435 nits-ish. Now I'm going to make a separate video all about this display, but first, and foremost, I can say that this is a great screen. I haven't even turned this one on yet. I should probably do that. The uniformity is great. They've done a good job getting it very close to sRGB. The grayscale calibration is very nice. Black response is nice. So there's no black clipping. There's no weird color shifting in the grayscale. So this is a very nicely calibrated display. I can watch dark scenes on this. Looks good. Skin tones look good. They didn't punch the gamma all the way up to something crazy like 2.6. It's like 2.3-ish. Apple's done a really good job with this display. I don't think people are going to be upset. Now, if you get one where the screen uniformity isn't good, go and exchange it because this is nearly perfect or perfect, really. And here's the silver one. And uniformity looks pretty good on this. It's hard to tell when that true tone display is on. Everything looks so warm. So anywho, I'll set this one up fully later. 
and I will have it around for the review so I can really see what differences there are with the screens. But at least if you get a good unit, this is fantastic. Very, very happy, Apple. Samsung made display, but Apple had control over customization and also the calibration. My biggest wonder is how long it's going to take to have everything adapted to fitting this display. Many apps right now have these black bars at both the top and the bottom, and it really looks very much like an iPhone 8. It's got that same aspect type. So I'm really hoping that we get updates soon, but plenty of apps are already supported. It looks like all of Google's apps are already supported. Popular social media apps, definitely Netflix. Of course, YouTube is as well. So it's going to be a wild ride. Apple says that this is it. This is the new thing. So let's talk a little bit about Face ID. Now, honestly, I don't think that they should have gotten rid of the home button. I feel like it's a little bit too ambitious for their first try, their first go around. There is no fallback. There's no fallback fingerprint sensor. So if this doesn't recognize you, you have to put a password in, which is not bad because that's very secure. But to me, it just feels a little bit daring and ambitious. And I know that's what Apple really wants to do. So, okay. So, so far, it's been pretty accurate. It hasn't been 100%. I've had it fail on me a couple of times today. For reasons I'm really not sure about, maybe I was holding it too close to my face. So I'm trying to find that sweet spot, and I need to go out and use it in daylight and in many different lighting situations and see how it overall performs. I think it's good enough to have by itself, but it does make me a little bit cranky. It is nice, though, that you have a couple of different options. Once I unlock it, I can go underneath Settings. If I want to, I can turn off the feature that says require attention for face ID. So this makes sure that I'm looking at the phone. So if I turn this off, I can have my eyes closed, for example. And as long as it sees my face and recognizes me, it will unlock. I think the only time that you would do that is they say some sunglasses may block attention detection. So that would be a good feature. It does make it less secure, but this might give it a greater chance of unlocking. So, so far it works most of the time. I do think it works more quickly than the iris scanner on the Galaxy Note 8. At least I feel like I'm having more success or faster success. But again, for me, it's just a little too ambitious. I really thought that they'd make the Apple logo a fingerprint sensor or something, but uh, they didn't. So we'll see how I feel over time. So you guys, please ask me as many questions as you can for the full review. I'm going to get that display video up as quickly as I can. I don't feel like playing with the Animojis thing I did earlier. It's something I would play with once in a while, but eh. I'm more interested in the hardware and how it functions, and especially how well the screen looks. So let me know what you guys think about the iPhone X. It's finally here. It's nice and small. Decent sized display that actually fits in my hand. Similar to the size of the Pixel 2 and the Galaxy S8. So this has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Again, ask your questions. Have a good night.